I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to learn the benefit of using sidechain filters within Logic's compressors. Okay, so let's find out first of all what a sidechain filter is. And in order to demonstrate this, what I'm actually doing is stepping outside of Logic's plugins for a moment to use the UAD SSL G bus compressor. Now, what I've done is to put this compressor over the entire output mix. So in other words, the sounds within this project are all going to pass through this compressor. Before we hear what it's doing, let's hear the drums within this uh, track stack that I've created just by themselves without any compression at all. Okay, now people often talk about compressing groups of sounds for the benefit of gluing those sounds together. And if you think about it, that makes sense. If a whole range of sounds is all passing through the same compressor, and that compressor therefore is being affected by all of the sounds within that group, of course, the characteristics of what that compressor brings to the project is going to apply to all of those drums, and we're gonna get that mixed glue if we get our settings right. But what I'm keen to do now is just to see what happens when I unbypass this so that this uh, plugin becomes part of this project, what we're looking to do is uh, see two separate things here. I've sort of set up this compressor so it's working quite hard. We should hear it really clearly. And what we're looking for is the amount of gain reduction which is being applied by these settings. In other words, once the sound gets through the threshold, how much volume are we losing? And how hard is that needle having to work to show us how much gain reduction is being applied. And of course, all the time we're listening to see how this compressor is affecting this drum group. And the answer is a lot. At the most extreme, we're losing eight decibels of volume. And what's particularly notable is that that happens primarily when the kick drum plays. Why is that? Well, partly because the kick drum is the loudest instrument, but also because of its low frequency content, it contains the most energy. So in other words, what we get is this huge kind of boost in volume every time the kick drum plays, and correspondingly, the compressor therefore responds, and it drops the most volume when the kick drum plays. Okay, so that's fine, and that works well, but what if we don't want that? What if we, what we want to do is to sort of get more power by asking the compressor to work less hard every time the kick drum plays? Wouldn't it be great if we could filter out the frequency content of the bass drum from the compressor, so that the compressor works less hard every time it hears the kick drum than it is right now. And that's what a sidechain filter is. And what we can do within this plugin is to bring in this high pass sidechain filter. And what that does is it says, okay, below this frequency point, I'm not listening to that frequency content anymore. So in other words, every time the kick drum plays, I'm not listening to the frequencies that constitute its lowest frequencies. I'm no longer going to respond to them. And the effect is quite dramatic because it means that they're kind of emitted from the compression detection process. Okay, now we can see that the compressor isn't losing anything like at eight decibels of volume. It's losing more like sort of four overall. And we can also see that that needle is being as affected by now the snare drum and the other elements within this track as it is by the bass drum, because we've effectively rolled out those frequencies. So let's bypass this altogether and see how we can do something similar with Logic's compressor. What I've got here is a drum stack. All of these sounds are being passed through this stack. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Logic's compressor to this project. And what I'm going to do first of all is to select the, um, the compression type that I want to use. And we're going to use the Studio VCA model. As always, what I'm going to do is to make sure that I switch off automatic gain compensation so we're not adding gain we don't want. And the first thing I'm going to do is to set some sort of similarly extreme settings so we can hear this compressor working really quickly. Um, and let's just do that now before we go any further. Thank you. 
Okay, so we've got a similar thing happening here. We can see that the needle is responding most extremely when it hears the kick drum, and we can now hear this kind of, yeah, much more compressed sound as a result of these quite extreme settings that I've uh, made. What I will do is just slightly boost uh, um, the uh, makeup gain so we can hear a little bit more volume. Okay, so a moment ago within the UAD plugin, we were looking at sidechain filtering, and we have the option to do something similar over here on the right hand side within Logic's own compressor. And the sidechain option changes the parameters that are over here on the right hand side so that we can start configuring which bits of frequency content we want to omit or leave out of the detection process so that we can actually create um, something a bit like what we were hearing before. But unlike the G-Bus compressor, there are actually a number of modes that I can use within Logic. So rather than only having a high pass filter, I might decide to use a different type of filter. In other words, maybe a low pass filter to actually decide that I want the compressor to focus its attentions on the low frequencies rather than to emit them. Okay, well, we'll see how that works in a moment. Firstly, let's see if we can recreate the effect that we had within that UAD plugin. What I'm going to do is to select the high pass filter mode. And what I'm going to do is to drop this much more down towards the base end. So effectively what we're doing is we're saying, okay, what I want to do is to um, omit those super low frequencies like we were before and, uh, and see what that leaves us with. Now within this, um, within Logic's compressor, what we have a chance to do at the moment is there are three ways in which we can sort of monitor um, how the sidechain is working. At the moment, we're not using it at all because we have this off button selected. And obviously I can turn it on over here on the right hand side. But in between those options, there's a listen function which allows me to hear the frequency content which is being highlighted before we then apply it to the compressor. Let's hear which bits of frequency content we're using at the moment. And we might just vary this frequency dial so we have a chance to really hear the differences. Okay, now let's just be clear. What we're listening to here should never be used in the capacity that we're using it at the moment. This isn't an EQ plugin. What I want to do here is just to basically make sure that I'm highlighting the frequency content I want to hear before then applying it to the compressor, which I'm going to do over here by pressing on. So remember, what I've done here is to select a high pass filter and to choose the frequency point, which again means that the compressor is not going to listen to the super low frequencies, and therefore, again, it won't be the kick drum that's forcing the compressor to work as hard as it was before. Okay, so you can hear that really clearly. We've got kind of a recreation of that um, SSL G-Bus effect that we heard a moment ago. So what other parameters have we got here? Well, firstly, what we have a chance to do is to choose a detection mode. This allows us to decide whether or not, if we're um, compressing stereo sounds, whether or not either side of that stereo field is enough to trigger the compressor's response, or whether or not we need both sides of that stereo or a stereo sound to trigger that. So we have two options there to decide whether or not the summed sound overall would trigger the, the um, compressor, or whether or not just one channel, um, it uh, then exceeding the uh, threshold point is enough to make this process begin. So that's what those two buttons do. And we've already seen what the filter section does here in terms of off, listen, and on. So crucially, what we can then do is to choose the type of filter that we want to use. So if, in other words, if we actually wanted to actually have the kick drum work even harder as a trigger for the compressor, we could select low pass. This basically means that we'd be focusing the frequency content towards the bottom end of the mix and then asking Logic to apply those frequencies to the compression process, meaning that we'd get a more extreme version of what uh, we were almost looking to avoid when we used uh, the G-Bus compressor across the output. Let's actually hear that. That would be interesting. Firstly, let's listen to those frequencies before then applying them to the compressor.
Okay, so you can hear that working, but maybe that effect wasn't as dramatic as you were expecting it to be. Well, if that's the case, remember what we talked about before. The kick drum is the loudest sound within this track. So effectively, what we've done there by selecting a low pass filter and focusing our attention on that frequency content is effectively sort of what the compressor is doing already. It's hearing that the kick drum is the loudest sound. And what it's then doing is saying, okay, well, I was kind of doing that already. I was already taking my sort of threshold and ratio settings from the loudest content within the track. So in a way that hasn't been as dramatic um, a treatment as it might have been. And if that makes sense, then you're definitely beginning to understand how sidechain filtering in this way can affect the way that your compressor behaves. So there are other modes there as well, bandpass filtering to select a particularly narrow group of frequencies and to apply those and ask uh, Logic's compression detection to listen only to a narrow group of frequencies and some other choices there as well. And this Q dial allows you to make the bandwidth and the, the width of that band even narrower or broader, depending on what it is that you're looking to experiment with. So when it comes to applying compression, if you find that compressors that are sitting across a group of sounds, not just drums, but maybe strings or uh, a whole range of sort of synths that are playing together, all together as one, if you suddenly find that maybe the compressor feels like it's responding to some sounds more than others, this allows you to choose which frequencies you want to have the compressor detect, and then to make slightly more musical decisions about how that compression gets applied.